Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, it is a fairly busy time of the year for me, so this will be a short but important video about a topic that I know is very important to many of you hair loss witchers, facial hair. So, probably the second most common question I get on this channel, besides shedding questions, of course, is whether or not finasteride or dutasteride can hurt your beard. Lots of people desire a thick beard like Geralt of Rivia, so it is an understandable question now, Chooms. But it is nevertheless a question that is based on a fairly common misunderstanding about the role that DHT plays in beard growth. Many people have heard that DHT is important for the development of the beard during puberty, so they will naturally jump to the conclusion that DHT is also important for beard growth in adults. But it turns out that assumption is completely wrong. So, if we're going to better understand all this, we need to take a look at the fine work of Dr. Julianne Imperato McGinley, who I should mention happens to be my mother in real life. Nah, just kidding. Anyways, back in 1974, Dr. Imperato McGinley discovered a group of men living in the Dominican Republic who were born with a lack of the 5 air enzyme that creates DHT in the body. She found that men with this genetic defect did not develop a beard during puberty, so it was clear that DHT was essential for beard development during puberty. Of course, the good news was that she also discovered that men lacking DHT never went bald. This was proof that DHT itself caused androgenic alopecia, and this discovery led to the development of 5 air blockers like finasteride and dutasteride. Like I've said many, many times on this channel, DHT is a trash hormone. But when I say that, I'm talking about DHT's role in adults. During fetal development and during puberty, DHT does play some important roles, which which is why DHT exists in the first place. Specifically, DHT plays an important role in fetal sexual differentiation as well as in the development of beards in adolescent men. Unfortunately, in adulthood, DHT is no longer useful, but like a parasite, it still exists in our body where it only does bad things like give us acne, hair loss, and an enlarged prostate. Fortunately, all these problems can be mitigated completely by reducing the levels of DHT in the body through the use of a 5-air inhibiting drug like finasteride or dutasteride. But because DHT is important for the development of facial hair during puberty, it is a reasonable question to ask if DHT is still needed to maintain your beard once it is fully developed. In other words, can finasteride or dutasteride actually kill your beard? I actually addressed this question a long time ago, about four years ago in fact in a video, and I'll link it below. However, the research on this question was limited at the time. The best study I could find back then was this study from 1980 titled, quote, Relationship Between Plasma Testosterone and Dihydrotestosterone Concentrations and Male Facial Hair Growth, unquote. The article looked at 12 healthy men and 8 men with celiac disease. For those who don't know, celiac disease is what makes it so people can't eat gluten. Now, I'm not talking about people who self-diagnose themselves with a gluten sensitivity after reading some shitty book written by some idiot celebrity doctor that they found at Whole Foods. That kind of gluten-free is a pseudoscientific health fact. But if you have celiac disease, it means you can't eat gluten for real, and that is because gluten will cause you to get malabsorption of nutrients in your intestines, which causes abnormalities in the synthesis of different hormones, including sex hormones. Back in the 1980s, it was found that certain forms of celiac disease were associated with increased testosterone levels and decreased DHT levels for pretty much unknown reasons at the time. Anyways, in the study, the investigators looked at both hair density and the rate of hair growth compared them to the testosterone and DHT levels in the normal men and the men with celiac disease. The investigators found that hair density correlated with testosterone levels, but the rate of hair growth correlated with DHT levels. The investigators concluded that, quote, linear facial hair growth was significantly reduced in celiac patients compared with the controls and correlated with plasma DHT, but not with plasma testosterone concentration. Conversely, hair density was significantly greater in celiacs than controls and correlated only with plasma testosterone concentration, unquote. In other words, the celiac disease subjects had a greater beard density due to having increased testosterone levels, but the rate of hair growth was reduced due to having decreased DHT levels. However, 
This is very old research we're talking about here, Chums. I mean, I was barely alive in 1982, and the number of subjects in the study was also pretty low, just 20 men in total. Also, celiac disease is associated with a lot of different abnormalities besides changes in sex hormones, so it is pretty difficult to know if the effects on beard growth and density were just related to sex hormone levels. Fortunately, science doesn't stand still, and it turns out there is new research on the subject. In fact, we even have a new article that just came out this month. The title of the the article is, quote, Impact of Finasteride and Dutasteride in Beard Thickness in Men with Androgenic Alopecia, or excuse me, Androgenetic Alopecia, a 453 patient retrospective trial, unquote. I always hate that. Androgenic, androgenic. Just choose one and stick with it. It's androgenic alopecia, goddammit. Anyways, the article is from Madrid, Spain. The study was an analysis of men younger than 35 years old who were treated with a 5 era blocker for at least a year. The range of ages in the study was between 16 and 35 years old, with an average average age of 24.6 years. This is an especially important detail because by age 16, that is usually when the beard has begun to develop, but the beard can continue to thicken even in men in their 20s. So the subjects in the study were receiving finasteride or dutasteride at a potentially vulnerable age. If five air blockers killed their beards, then it would be evident in this age group. All of the men in the study did have beards, so I guess beards are pretty popular in Spain. Anyways, there were 453 men enrolled in the study. 100 of the subjects were on finasteride at 1 mg per day, while the other 353 subjects were taking dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day. So the study's covering both of the two 5 error inhibiting drugs. That's great. But anyways, the beard density was assessed by photographs before treatment and after at least 12 months of treatment with a 5 error blocker. So here are the results. As you can see, the vast majority of men had absolutely no change in their beard density over at least a year. 94% of men who were on finasteride and 97.7% .7 of men who were on dutasteride had no change in their beard density at all. Only 5 subjects out of the 453 men had worsening of their beard density, which was only 1.1% of the entire group. On the other hand, 9 patients actually had improvement in their beard density, which was 1.9% of the whole group. So I should remind you, more people had improvement in beer density than worsening of beer density while on 5 error blocking drugs. Who would have thunk it, right? So this all indicates to me that in 99% of men on finasteride or dutasteride, beer density will at least stay the same and may actually improve in a small percentage of men, probably because these drugs will increase testosterone by an average of about 10%, and it is testosterone that drives beer growth, not DHT. That is completely consistent with the findings in the celiac disease study I mentioned earlier in my video from four years ago where the men who had celiac disease actually had better beard density than the control subjects despite having lower DHT levels. Their better beard density was due to increased testosterone and testosterone also increases on 5 air blockers as we all know. So once again, this data confirms completely that after puberty, DHT is a trash hormone that is not necessary for beard growth or anything else. Testosterone is all you need for beard growth after puberty and to function as a man in any capacity. And to further reinforce that point when it comes to facial hair development, there is data that once a beard is established, it is very hard, if not impossible to kill, even with androgen blockers or even if you give estrogen to the subject. So even testosterone may not be essential for beard growth in adults once the facial hair is already developed. Some evidence for this comes from the fact that in male to female transgender subjects, beard growth is extremely resistant to estrogen and to anti-androgens like cyproterone acetate, which are far stronger than anything a hair loss sufferer should ever consider using. And that's why a lot of male to female transgender people have to undergo electrolysis in order to eliminate their beards. This is all backed up by this article here. This study of male to female transgender subjects found that although the hair diameter and growth rate were affected by anti-androgens and estrogen, male beard growth was not substantially affected even after 12 months of treatment. The authors concluded that circulating androgens aren't even necessary for male beard growth once it is already established. Of course, finasteride and dutasteride are not the same thing as giving a pure anti-androgen drug like cyproterone acetate. In fact, like I already pointed out, both drugs actually increase 
serum testosterone levels. So there's no reason to think that they would kill your beard since if anything, it's testosterone that is important if anything's important at all. The authors of this study from Spain concluded that this rise of testosterone levels from 5 era blocking drugs actually promotes beard growth even in the face of low levels of DHT. So this is all very good evidence that lowering your DHT levels will not affect your beard growth and if anything, it may actually promote beard growth since it raises your testosterone levels. But if I'm speaking completely honestly here, a lot of beard growth is just due to genetic factors. I mean, I've never had a great beard even before I went on finasteride, but I've noticed no change with my lackluster beard growth even on finasteride. I mean, this facial fungus you see right here, that's about as good as my beard will ever get. So clearly, the increase in DHT levels during puberty does trigger beard growth, but after puberty, it is just a trash hormone that doesn't help our beards in any way whatsoever, while at the same time, it takes away the hair on our scalp, which let's face it, Jooms, is a hell of a lot more important. So hopefully this new study is reassuring to you guys who are hesitant to take a 5 year blocking drug because you're worried about your beards. It's nothing to be worried about. It's just more fear-mongering from anti-finasteride losers who want you to go bald so they can better cope with their decision not to take finasteride. So, all right. I will be back with some more preem content soon. Thank you so much for watching, my fellow hair loss switchers. I'll see you all next time. God bless.